A spaceport very much like an international airport, our INSAT 2E that we saw in our opening titles, very much like a plane soon to take off, but of course vertically from pad number ELA2. So fasten your seatbelt, here we go, Arian Space Flight 117 for the Indian Space Research Organization. Welcome to Kuru, where once again, as we see, another Ariane launcher is about to lift off. Good evening to all of you as well from uh, Juan de Dalmau, speaking from uh, Kourou to wherever you may be uh, watching us uh, in French Guiana, in Europe, the United States or India. We are uh, go. Uh, the weather is very cloudy here in Kourou, but uh, still go for liftoff in uh, less than 24 minutes now. We'll be watching that little green countdown clock in the top right hand corner. So long as it remains on the green background, then we're go for launch. The weather, as you said, uh, some uncertainty throughout the day. We're at the start of the long rainy season here in French Guiana, but we believe that uh, conditions will be A-OK -okay to lift off in 22 minutes' time. Right. Uh, weather is OK, and this is, in fact, already the seventh satellite that uh, Ariane is going to carry into space for India. It is a long-standing cooperation with Europe that started uh, 17 years ago with the launch of the Apple satellite uh, for India in uh, 1981. Let's go back now, just over a month ago, 26th of February to be precise, for the first Arian space flight of the year. On 26 February this year, an Ariane 4 launcher was uh, carrying two telecommunications spacecraft into space one of them was Skynet 4E for the British Ministry of Defence, Telecommunications. And the other one was for the Arab League, Arabsat 3A, also telecommunications. They were both placed, as usual, in a very accurate transfer orbit above the equator. Both satellites are today about to complete the orbital tests and will be commissioned in the coming days. The accurate delivery into orbit, of course, has uh, as a direct consequence an extended lifetime of the satellites. And of course, we hope to be fulfilling the same uh, target, uh, getting INSAT 2E precisely up to the desired orbit. 21 minutes and 14 seconds. All systems go or green in our language. The status panels, which are up against the wall in front of everybody here, in front of the operational teams and the invited guests. Blue means that the operations still have to be performed. So they are progressively moving from, green, from blue to green. And we would like to show you now what the launch pad looked this afternoon, about uh, five hours ago, when the launch gantry protecting the launcher was uh, withdrawn to allow for the beginning of the fueling operations of the third stage. Here is the launcher with its uh, 54 meter high and more than 330 tons at liftoff. The particular configuration today has two solid strap-on boosters on each side of the main stage. The launcher hardware has been manufactured by some 36 aerospace firms throughout Europe and it has three stages. The top stage has been fueled and is still being topped up right now and INSAT with its 2.5 tons is sitting inside the fairing on the top of the launch vehicle. This was shot, as you can see, uh, this afternoon. Now it is already night in Kourou, and the clouds were casting all of the sky. It's the twelfth time we use a 42P. And the uh, launch azimuth today will be due east, so we're moving directly towards uh, India. And a, chance. and a launch window, that's the period in which we have uh, to lift off, a window that is 50 minutes long and the corresponding time shown around the world, shown on screen now. We would like to give uh, special greetings to our TV viewers through the Dordadashan station television in India. And the uh, 
coming explanations now will be to illustrate how the uh, satellite, the INSAT 2E, and the launcher have been prepared here. Please don't worry about the small flames on the foot of the launcher. We will tell you what they are for. Pierre Ribardier here is the uh, range operations manager of CNES uh, at the Guyana Space Center. One of the uh, ISRO team managers, Mr. Baskarara Narayna from ISRO, is uh, leading his team and uh, monitoring the satellite, sitting next to Mr. Danabalan in Jupiter Mission Control. These two campaigns now, let's review them with the mission director, Remy Koshe. He went out to the service gantry to the 62-meter level on day minus four, whilst operations were still proceeding. We are currently at the payload level on the launch area number two, in front of the upper part where the satellite is contained, INSAT 2E being the passenger of this flight 117. The launch itself, which carries this satellite, took its shape a few weeks ago, a kilometer from here in the assembly building. The crews started with the meeting of the first stage, then the second, and at last the third stage. And everything was checked before the rollout to the pad. This morning, we are at D-4. Early, the satellite was hoisted to the top of the launcher. The teams you can see behind me are finalizing the vehicle equipment bay before it is closed. Then we'll have to undergo some electrical tests at D-3 and D-2, and we'll start filling the launcher before the final come down. A few words about our passenger inset. It was processed in the payload preparation complex, filled with propellants by the inset team, and finally closed, or as we say, encapsulated inside the fairing two days ago, before being transferred here at the top of the launcher. back live with you and uh, we've had five days since uh, this last clip was shot. Uh, what has happened uh, since? There was a uh, general review, a launch readiness review three days ago. Here is Jean-Marie Luton. He is the flight director for this mission, the final authority in and the Alain, chain. Uh, Alain Ben Soussan, uh, chairman, uh, president of uh, CNES, the French space agency, which has long ties with uh, ISRO in uh, cooperative programs. Let's now evoke the history of the INSAT-2 satellite program, the design and the construction of Ariane's passenger tonight. The Indian National Satellite System, one of the largest domestic communication satellite systems in the world today. The second generation of INSAT satellites were designed and built by the ISRO Satellite Center at Bangalore. INSAT-2E, the last of the second generation of INSAT satellites, is the most advanced satellite built so far in terms of technologies used in the mechanical and electronic hardware and the state-of-the-art payloads. The state-of-the-art gallium arsenide over germanium cells are used in fabricating the solar panels to generate a higher power of about 2,240 watts to meet the spacecraft power demands with adequate margin. INSAT-2E has a cuboid structure built around a corrugated thrust-bearing central cylinder which houses inside it the spherical fuel and oxidizer tanks. The payloads and the mainframe packages have been mounted on the equipment panels and the decks. The detailed integrated spacecraft test after the assembly of all hardware was followed by the thermo vacuum test in the large space simulation chamber. The thermal design was further validated under a specially conducted thermal balance test, including sun simulation, simulating the in-orbit thermal audit. Embedded heat pipe panels have been used for the first time for efficient thermal control. 
The deployable appendages like the solar array, the solar sail and the antenna reflectors were integrated and pre-dynamic deployment tests were conducted. To compensate for the seasonal variation in solar pressure torque, solar flap has been added at the tip of the solar array. The satellite underwent the dynamic tests, which included vibration and acoustic tests. The acoustic test was conducted at the acoustic test facility available with the National Aerospace Laboratories. The satellite was airlifted to French Guyana in specially designed containers with utmost care and precision by a special cargo aircraft on 13th February for launch on board an Ariane 4 vehicle from Koro. The realization of INSAT 2E has posed many technological challenges and has provided an enriching experience and has become the forerunner to the third generation INSAT 3 satellites. The launching and commissioning of INSAT 2E will mark the beginning of a new era of long life mission satellites under the Indian space program. A multi-purpose mission, telecommunications, television and meteorology, which we'll be talking about later on in our program. The uh, teams we see on and off on our screens have uh, started working for this particular flight uh, six weeks ago with the preparation of INSAT and about four weeks ago with the preparation of the uh, launcher. On the right uh, hand image is uh, Yves Bondil from Aranis Pass, the launcher operations manager, leading his crew at the firing room uh, only one kilometer away from the launch pad. And on the left hand side is Mission Control Jupiter where all the uh, operations coordination is performed and uh, from where we are speaking to you. We are located at about uh, 14 kilometers from the pad. There are about uh, 1,500 people working here at the European Spaceport. About a third of them are involved in Arian Space launch activities directly under the responsibility of Bernard Duna. He's the Arian Space Head of Establishment here. And with parallel campaigns and improvements actually underway to the ground facilities, there's a lot to look after. We are next to the Flight 118 launcher at the first stage engine level. You can see two crews working at the preparation of the engine for the launch. We have a team of around 500 permanent staff in French Guyane. And for each campaign, we have an additional 70 persons coming from the European companies building the launcher. They come here to work on the launcher until the final operations and liftoff. The year started slowly since we had our first launch at the end of February. Though we are planning for 10 to 11 Ariane 4 on 3 Ariane 5 this year. But we'll speed up in April since we launched flight 117 on April 2nd, flight 118 on April 28th. Then we hope to launch Ariane 5 during the months of June. The great challenge today is to launch this 3 Ariane 5 and thus demonstrate we can increase the launch rate with Ariane 5. With Ariane 5, we hope to have a dual launch each time. With the launch of two satellites at a time, the difficult task will be the preparation of the satellites. So we need a new facility to process this growing number of pillows. Right, nine minutes and 35 seconds to go. Uh, Juan, I think you're still listening in to the uh, last uh, meteor report, which is at the uh, nominal minus 10 minutes. Here we see a map of the weather situation, which you'll be explaining in just a moment. Uh, the Jupiter Mission Control Center is uh, filled with uh, internal audio circuits linking all the operational teams and linking us obviously with the Launch Operations Center, which is uh, a kilometer from the pad. 
All the status panels are green, so conditions appear to be still good for liftoff. We'll be having the details of the weather in just a moment. Eight minutes and some 50 seconds to go. At the six minute mark, we'll be uh, entering an automatic sequence, which we'll be explaining when it comes. There again, we see Yves Bondil on the right-hand side, part of the INSAT team on the left-hand side, and our launcher behind. Here now a shot of the uh, tracking station not far from Kuru, where the telemetry from the launcher arrives uh, in real time, and uh, it's the facility where one has the first details of how the launcher will be flying and rising. This information is relayed to the Jupiter Mission Control Center. The INSAT team are monitoring their satellite. The batteries of their satellite were charged. They started charging the batteries some six and a half hours ago. A very gentle procedure to make sure these uh, batteries are charged fully for the period in which the satellite will depend entirely upon them before it opens its solar panels. You have some uh, information, Juan, on the weather? Yes, indeed. Uh, we had a very detailed uh, briefing a minute ago, and uh, we can say that uh, all of the meteorological criteria are go for liftoff, uh, provided that liftoff occurs uh, at the uh, expected uh, liftoff time, which is uh, in uh, six minutes and 50 seconds now. The uh, cloud coverage is still very heavy, so uh, we hope that we can launch uh, within the first 10 minutes of the launch window today, of the launch opportunity, which is quite comfortable because uh, it is uh, 50 minutes long. Right, so Pierre Ribardier, the launch range manager, about to announce the six-minute mark. And from that moment on, things will be entirely under the control of two computers in the launch control center. We should have the announcement uh, of the minus six minute mark. À tous de l'EDO, attention pour le début de la séquence synchronisée de lancement. Top moins six minutes. Right, now perhaps Juan, you can explain to everybody why we need an automatic sequence during this last final run. Yes, if we want to respect the uh, scheduled liftoff time, there is a high number of uh, checkouts and of commands sent to the launcher that have to be done in a very reliable and very fast manner. And the best way to do that is uh, through uh, automated systems that are uh, controlled from the uh, firing room or firing room building uh, at only a thousand, kilo a thousand meter from the launch pad. On and off, we are seeing a shots from the launcher with the uh, flames in the lower part. That is actually not happening at the uh, foot of the launcher, but is happening a few hundred meter behind the launcher. It's just an optical illusion. And those flames are the results of uh, burning the excess gaseous hydrogen that uh, is being used for the topping up of the uh, Ariane 4 third stage here uh, we see this shot again some uh, vapor clouds are coming out of the feeding lines uh, because through them there are very low temperature hydrogen at, and oxygen in liquid state because they are at uh, below minus 200 degrees celsius to make sure that the maximum quantity of propellants are uh, into the stage dr kasturi rangan the chairman of isro Indian Space Research Organization, and again the range operations manager, who looks quite confident for a liftoff in less than four minutes uh, and 20 seconds now. I suppose that once the reservoirs, the oxygen, liquid oxygen, liquid hydrogen reservoirs are topped up, then they are closed and pressurized. Is that the procedure? 
Yes, some of the main uh, operations happening right now uh, are the uh, pressurization to flight values of uh, both hydrogen and oxygen tanks, uh, Martin, as you say. Other key operations uh, being performed right now are the switchover uh, of uh, electrical power feeding of the INSAT spacecraft from ground feeding to onboard power, and that has already been confirmed. The launch vehicle itself is performing a similar operation right now, switching over to onboard battery power. And uh, another crucial operation that we hope everyone can see close to ignition time will be the release of the two cryogenic feeding arms that are shown with uh, two different cameras at the level of the third stage. And they run from the umbilical tower on the right to the third stage on the left. I always think it's a rather poetic scene. It's as though these two arms are holding the launcher, as though they did not want it to lift off. But You could uh, say so, yes, Martin. And uh, we're mentioning a lot the third stage, but we have to talk a bit more about the first and second stages, and that will be done after liftoff. The president of CNES there, long ties, you, we mentioned uh, some time ago, with ISRO and uh, future projects, including a project that will dir directly interest uh, India and the tropical regions, uh, a project uh, to uh, study the movement of water around the tropics, whether it be in the oceans, the atmosphere, or on uh, dry land, a project called Megatropics, which uh, will be starting shortly. Monsieur Luton, watching proceedings there. Two minutes coming up. In the center, we see Jean-Francois Lumonier. He's the uh, payload manager for Ariane Space. And responsible for the uh, launch service contract uh, with uh, ISRO. Minus one minute, 47 seconds and counting. All systems go for ignition of the four main stage engines, which will be followed by some three seconds of checkout, automated checkout procedure before liftoff until the computer system gives green light to the ignition of the two solid strap-on boosters and simultaneously the release of the launch platform jaws or clamps which will allow for liftoff. Right, the last 60 seconds. Adios de Deo, attention pour H-1 minute. Top, moins une minute et décompte. Right, our launcher beautifully illuminated out there on the second European launch pad. Remember here we have uh, pad number three from which the Ariane 5 launcher lifts off. 43 seconds to go in the Jupiter mission control. Some people going out onto the balconies to see the liftoff with their own eyes. Let's now sit tight and appreciate the liftoff of Ariane flight 117 with ISRO's INSAT-2E, telecoms, television, and meteorology for India and the whole of Asia. À tous les déos, attention pour le décompte final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, unité, feu. Allumage. Décollage. Right, our, our launcher is off. Characteristic white plume of the solid propellant boosters. We're trying to we're trying to see the launcher through the telescopes. We hope that they can see uh, in the clear spots through the clouds. We have shut down of those solid propellant boosters, which has been announced. Yes, they only give uh, propulsion for less than a minute. Tous les paramètres bord sont normaux et la trajectoire est normale. 
All parameters are normal, all systems normal on board, as you can hear from the range operations manager. And since our launcher has disappeared from sight, perhaps we can explain on screen, the first of all, the curve. It's the nominal trajectory that we'll be following and the little white dot that uh, represents our launcher. And on the right-hand side, some figures, altitude and velocity, which we see, I, I think, Juan? Right, uh, if we start from uh, the bottom line on the right, the uh, velocity is in kilometers per second and uh, we'll be raising, rising uh, very quickly. Just above the line on altitude, symbolized with an A, very rapidly increasing velocity, and we can have some pictures of the launcher through telescopes. We just had confirmation of jettisoning of the two strap-on boosters. They will now fall on the ground inside the safety area of the Guyana Space Center, and they have been manufactured in Italy by Fiat Avio. And even inside our commentary positions here in the Jupiter building, we can hear the rumble, the very low rumble of the launch vehicle as it uh, passes not far off, heading out eastwards across the Atlantic. Now propulsion of the launcher is being assured by the uh, first stage with its four engines. It is consuming more than 220 tons of propellants in a few minutes. That makes it uh, practically more than one ton of propellant every second. Les paramètres bord sont normaux et la trajectoire est normale. The uh, nominal flight path on the left-hand side is being followed very accurately by the launcher. All this information is coming to us through radar and through telemetry receiving stations. The first of them is located right here on the Guyana Space Center, but will be followed up by some other downrange station. As we follow the ascension of our uh, launcher, we'll be mentioning the different industrial companies that uh, have uh, contributed at the moment. The first stage is the responsibility of France's Aerospatiale with the engines that come from SEP, a division of SNECMA, a uh, very good uh, day or good evening to you in France. Extinction du premier étage. Right. Shutdown of the first stage. Separation du premier étage. Separation. Allumage du deuxième étage. And ignition of the second stage. Les paramètres bord sont normaux et la trajectoire est normale. Graphical representation there on what is happening up in space. That was a major landmark. Uh, first stage is now uh, falling down onto the Atlant into the Atlantic Ocean and uh, should splash down uh, rather quickly at the distance of uh, some thousand kilometers offshore into the Atlantic. The next event uh, in the flight path is the uh, jettisoning of the uh, fairing. This is the cover that was hiding insat from view. Right. Largage de la coiffe. Here we have it and the uh, protective nose fairing is not needed anymore since INSAT is already, as you can read on the bottom, at more than 120 kilometers above the equator, where there is practically no atmosphere and the la trajectoire est normal. protection is not needed anymore. So the launcher is now free of, this, of these uh, some 700 kilograms of weight of the nose fairing which has been manufactured in Switzerland by Contravis Space and will be falling down also at the distance of uh, some thousand kilometers uh, east of Kourou. If we look at the bottom line on the right hand side, we see the velocity climbing slowly and should reach the target velocity at the orbital injection time of 9.7 kilometers per second. But we still have some 15 minutes to go. 165. 170 kilometer altitude already. Right now, propulsion is being provided by the second stage, and it is consuming 30, 38 tons of propellants in less than two minutes. Separation, deuxième étage. Separation of the second and third stage. Du troisième étage. And ignition of the third cryogenic stage has been announced and confirmed. 
That is also a major uh, milestone in this Tous les mission. paramètres bord sont normaux et la trajectoire est normale. From the 326 tons at liftoff, we're now down to some uh, uh, 15, 11, tons. 15 tons, yes, yes. including 11 tons of propellant, those cryogenic fuels. And the second stage has uh, completed its mission. It was manufactured, assembled in Germany, more precisely in Bremen by Daimler Chrysler Aerospace. The it will be splashing down at uh, a bit more uh, than 2,000 kilometers east of the South American coast. Acquisition par la station télémesure de Natal au Brésil. Right, throughout the flight, our launch vehicle is being tracked and followed by ground tracking stations. Uh, the first were in French Guiana. Now it is being followed by the station in Natal, which is uh, sending uh, part of this, these data uh, in real time to the uh, Kourou station located on the Space Center grounds here. And the, all Tous the information we see on the lower part of the screen is being sent to us through this telemetry system using several downrange stations. The Natal one in Brazil has a special agreement with the Space Center and provides support to each of the eastward launches. And that, those are the majority of them because that's the type of orbit used by most of the telecommunication satellites. Les paramètres bord sont inside. normaux et la trajectoire est normale. Just Everyone. a little, little word, Juan, about uh, some of the invited guests here whom we've seen uh, just a moment ago on screen. We have uh, quite a sizable delegation from Intelsat, which should be explained, in that for the very first time, ISRO is leasing part of its transponder capacity on INSAT-2E to Intelsat. In fact, 11 of the 17 transponders will be used by the International Telecommunications Organization. So uh, we say good day and everybody to everybody in Washington following this video transmission. No doubt you're very interested and awaiting the separation of the satellite and its entry into commercial service, I believe, around the 1st of uh, May. In fact, the uh, footprint or the coverage of INSAT for telecommunications has been growing uh, since the uh, 70s and 80s to a, et la est global, to a global coverage right now. And uh, we can understand that Intelsat is interested in using this satellite because uh, it covers not only India and Asia, but also the Australian continent. Eight minutes and 40, 50 seconds into flight, everything is nominal according to the reports. Uh, altitude already 298 practically kilometers. Speed, velocity, 5.1 kilometers per second. And propulsion is being provided by the third stage, which is consuming about 11 tons of liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. And our launcher is often uh, described, and it is truly that, as an intelligent vehicle. It is guiding itself up to the target point, the point of injection. And this is possible with what we call the The vehicle equipment bay, to use a technical term, which is uh, performing the guidance, the navigation, and the control functions in a fully automated way throughout the uh, mission. And this is... Uh, 500 kilogram piece of equipment assembled and checked by Matra Marconi Space in Toulouse, France. Perhaps we can explain, uh, people may be puzzled by the trajectory curve as shown. Uh, do we actually come back a bit closer to Earth with this dip that is shown? That is correct. In fact, this curve is a little bit uh, different from what we would see if we were in space, because the uh, curve of the, uh, the, the uh, round form of the planet Earth has been flattened, just for uh, graphical uh, reasons. But indeed, as you say, Martin, uh, the altitude of Ariane will be decreasing, and we can uh, monitor this uh, looking at the second line from bottom. And the purpose uh, of this is to increase the velocity? The purpose of this is to make the best use of the uh, propellants on board to reach the uh, satellization velocity. And uh, the first part of the flight path, as, as you can see on the left, is uh, quite vertical to make sure that uh, we 
go across the uh, atmosphere as quickly as possible. And then, uh, as you say, the uh, descending part of the flight path is used to uh, get some additional velocity. Very soon we will be reaching an incredible distance traveled of more than 4,000 kilometers. On screen is the director of the Guiana Space Center, Monsieur Michel Mignot. Let's say a few words now about the use of this uh, satellite. Um, it is a multi-purpose satellite that uh, we mentioned already, telecommunications. Uh, it's interesting, we were told, speaking to the spacecraft team, that there are over a thousand terrestrial television transmitters throughout India, and all of them rely on their signal for their signals on the INSAT satellite system. It is a crucial system of distribution of television pictures. All parameters bord sont normaux et la trajectoire est normale. All, all parameters normal on board. Also, in terms of telecommunications, we were told that uh, it will have a VSAT capacity, and India apparently is one of the countries that is the most equipped with these VSAT small terminals. Um, all this capacity will be used then not just for television for the Indian population, but also for remote learning, for example. When we were uh, talking about the weather conditions here in French Guiana, Martin, uh, before liftoff, you showed us a weather satellite picture, which uh, came, in fact, from uh, United States uh, GOES spacecraft. It is one of the satellites used here for uh, weather uh, monitoring. Another one is the uh, European-made Meteosat. And uh, I think we should make it clear uh, Martin, that the uh, use of weather satellites is not only for uh, rocket launches, is it? <laughs> uh, the Ascension Island tracking station that we see now uh, has picked up the launch vehicle. Let's say a few words now about the actual satellite itself. Uh, which has a, a curious appearance. It's not symmetrical with solar generators on each side. And uh, we should be having a, a picture of it in a few moments' time. It is a satellite uh, of uh, cuboid shape, essentially, centrally, with a solar generator on one side. And on the other side, there is what we call Tous a les solar, sont solar sail. Il reste cinq minutes de we have some uh, future astronauts also sitting with us. The meteorology mission is very important for INSAT. Uh, it'll be uh, surveying the Indian subcontinent in uh, three wave bands with its very high resolution radiometer. And the new aspect of this with regard to preceding INSAT uh, craft is that it will be measuring water vapor. This uh, measurement and this study, the surveillance of water vapor, will be able to monitor the development of cyclone formation and give advance warnings. Uh, we were told, discussing these questions with the INSAT team, that it's been estimated that the INSAT system has saved 600,000 lives since uh, these satellites have been in orbit, which is uh, an interesting fact. In fact, INSAT, the whole uh, Indian satellite system is, is designed uh, to serve the needs of the Indian subcontinent and to improve the quality of life uh, of a very large population. Let's say a few words now about Ariane space as we have under four minutes of one propulsion. Of, uh, right here now on the picture, one of the uh, crucial operations that will be performed once INSAT, uh, Insight is in its uh, geosynchronous orbit, uh, namely the deployment of the solar array and of the solar sail, reaching an overall span of uh, 25 meters. That's about eight story building. A few words now then about our company, Ariane Space, which uh, only two days ago announced another contract, uh, another contract in the bag, bringing Tous it to uh, 39 satellites to launch. 39 to launch, including this one, so it'll be 38 in a few moments' time. Perte par les moyens natales. The objectives of Ariane Space this year, which we mentioned with Monsieur Donat earlier, 
Two flights so far, the second flight and nine more flights of Ariane 4 and the most important three Ariane 5 flights that are scheduled before the year is out. Many improvements also in French Guiana, Juan, I believe, concerning Ariane 5. Yes, uh, one of the uh, construction works going on right now here is uh, the uh, building of a new satellite processing facility to uh, allow for a higher launch rate and for uh, larger spacecraft as well as uh, constellation spacecraft. This should be uh, available in about uh, 18 months time. And uh, as we mentioned, the improvements that are scheduled to Ariane 5, there is a ministerial meeting of the European Space Agency ministers, which is scheduled uh, later in the spring. Yes, yes it is uh, scheduled for uh, 11 and 12 of May of this year in Brussels. And one of the major decisions expected at this uh, ESA Council meeting will be the improvements of the Ariane 5 performance with a new type of... Uh, cryogenic upper stage, which should uh, increase the performance of RN5 uh, to uh, 11 tons uh, by 2005. These subjects were uh, cons constituted a presentation in San Francisco, which ended yesterday, where Ariane Space brought together uh, customers, uh, eventual future customers, to talk about Ariane 5 developments. And uh, one of the developments is that I understand that Ariane 5 has the biggest volume fairing that exists. And just to give you an idea, in January next year, Ariane Space will be launching the European Space Agency X-ray telescope, which is 10 meters tall under the fairing. And it's only the short fairing that we have. We're using Ariane 4 and we're moving eastwards uh, with uh, INSAT 2E on board. In fact, uh, it, it just happened so that uh, we're getting closer and closer to Bangalore and we should have visibility <laughs> from there uh, quite soon. We hope that the uh, climate in Bangalore is uh, better today than uh, it is in Kourou because uh, we have been told that uh, uh, the region there is called India's uh, garden city and it is also called in this uh, Silicon Valley uh, because of its uh, high-tech and space activities. Right, about 15 seconds more propulsion of this third stage I just heard. About 180 kilometers south of uh, Bangalore is the Hassan Satellite Control Station where we, hope, par la station Libreville. Where we hope the teams are also... Extinction du troisième étage. Okay. Right, we have shut down of the third stage. Now a series of maneuvers are necessary before we actually release our pressure satellite. Début de la manoeuvre d'orientation du composite. The launcher is now under visibility of the Libreville downrange station located in Gabon on the west coast of Africa. So we see you, we are indeed moving eastwards. And uh, we know that the... Uh, network of ground stations that are uh, monitored by the Hassan station in India are ready to take over responsibility over the baby, over the INSAT 2E spacecraft as soon as uh, it reaches their visibility. In fact, the Hassan station will be controlling a network of uh, four other ground stations for the first five days of uh, in-orbit operations and these ground stations are located in Australia, Canada and Italy, and of course uh, Hassan in India. Just to explain that Ariane is placing our satellite into a temporary transfer orbit, which is elliptical, and using its own propulsion system with two burns of an engine, it will raise and circularize this orbit to the geosynchronous orbit that is 36,000 kilometers high. We see now that the altitude is uh, rising uh, very fast. Uh, we just have to watch uh, on the second line from bottom. It is uh, about one kilometer per second getting above uh, the equator. The final orbit to be reached is an elliptical so-called geostationary transfer orbit with its lowest point at some 250 kilometers above the Earth and with its highest point, the apogee, at some 36,000 kilometers. Tous les paramètres bord sont normaux. Right, we're only some 
30 seconds away from the separation of INSAT, INSAT 2E, the start of life for this last of the INSAT 2 generation craft. The satellite has traveled already more than 6,000 kilometers. La phase de SCAR se poursuit normalement. The uh, orientation. Separation uh, INSAT 2E. Separation of INSAT 2E has been announced, and of course, there's warm applause, relief. Everybody is happy. Months, sometimes years of effort. And this is only part of the Ariane mission. The teams we were mentioning, controlled from Hassan, will now be responsible for some crucial operations in the coming days, uh, namely uh, two Apogee boost motor firings to uh, transform that uh, elliptical transfer orbit into a circular one. That will be followed by the deployment of the solar array and the uh, solar sail. And this early orbit phase should be finished uh, by 17 of April in view of uh, the performance of uh, some in-orbit tests of the equipment for a start of commercial activities of INSAT 2E in May, in early May of this year. And INSAT 2E is joining uh, several other INSAT 2 craft already operational in orbit. Let's see a recall. Right, our, our launcher is off. Characteristic white plume of the solid propellant boosters. We're trying to... We're trying to the uh, Ariane mission is almost finished, but some uh, important operations are going to happen in the coming minutes. One of them is the depletion of uh, propellants on board the third stage to make sure that uh, there is no explosion and that it stays in one, in one piece this has a large contribution to the keeping space clean and avoiding the formation of unnecessary space debris. Another operation that is very important for the ISRO, the INSAT 2E people, is that uh, RNSPAS will be providing them with the exact orbital parameters uh, so that they know where the spacecraft is and how it is uh, oriented towards the Earth and that uh, they can determine the orbit and they can start those operations uh, we were describing. And we can only wish a long lifetime for INSAT 2E, which should be at least 12 years. One of the things we didn't mention was the entire capacity of INSAT 2E has been uh, fully booked up. And in fact, the uh, demand for transponder capacity uh, over the India uh, subcontinent and over the region is so great that uh, ISRO has already planned and built, in fact, a third generation of craft. Uh, the first INSAT-3 satellite is due to be launched again from Kuru, surprise, surprise, uh, at the end of this year, INSAT-3B. There will be five satellites in this generation, and uh, no doubt we hope that uh, other INSAT-3 satellites also come to Kuru. Right, we're waiting for the customary traditional uh, speeches uh, from uh, the flight director, who will be giving uh, his report on uh, the proceedings, this successful launch, from Jean-Marie Luton. And uh, before then, another replay. The liftoff, as seen by other cameras. Beaming Jean-Marie Luton, Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of Ariane Space, 
And behind him, Michel Mignot, the director of the Guiana Space Center. First of all, I should like to thank very much Professor Castori Rangan for his uh, confidence that he has given to us. Tonight, we have uh, had uh, 36 Harian 4 launched and uh, the last 44 were totally successful in a row. I want to thank first all the team which has helped us to achieve such uh, success and record. Thanks to industrial team in Europe, thanks to operational teams in Guyana, in CNES, in uh, ESA, and uh, it's very important that we have worked together to do this. And thanks to Ariane Spass team, because we were a lot of uh, work which has permitted to, to achieve all this. And I am very particularly happy that uh, this new success happens for a customer which has cooperated with us, with ESA, with NES, since a long time, since a long time, because you have started with uh, Apple in uh, 81. And it was after six, now, six uh, INSAT, which has been launched for the benefits of India. And uh, we have uh, all these six uh, uh, INSAT has been successfully launched. So next time, it will be freebie in during this autumn. And I shall be very happy to welcome you again at that time. And uh, it's clear that we were totally impressed by the professionalism of your team during this campaign. And it's very, very important to tell you that you have to congratulate them from our side. We, my best wish for the next operation, I hope we will have get uh, some news. And, uh, that the satellite has been given its first uh, telemetry. And uh, I should like to thank India and ISRO for your confidence in Iron Space. This event is a new step in a partnership between India and Europe. And ISRO is for us a prestigious customer. So, it will have been uh, done during the last 70 years. Thanks, and come again. Thank you. Mr. Luton and all the distinguished guests here, first of all, let me extend my warm congratulations to the Ariane Space, to Mr. Lothar, Professor Ben Sousa, the CSG staff, and all the rest of them who participated in this major campaign and finally culminating in the success of the Ariane Flight 117, which we were all here to witness and admire. Certainly, it was as usual, a textbook-like flight with uh, the strap-ons, the first stage ignition, the sec first stage separation, the second stage ignition, and uh, second stage separation, and the third stage ignition, and the flight of the third stage as per exactly the planned sequence. In fact, uh, this particular flight, I think, gave us a little more velocity than what was needed, 30 meters per second, I understand, from my colleague who was sitting nearby. But nevertheless, uh, I think it was, as usual, trimmed. 
Uh, but what is significant about this flight is the fact that it was a flight dedicated to the flight of the INSAT 2E alone. There was no co-passenger with us. And in fact, that is one of the major decisions that Arian Space and others took in this connection. And I'm very thankful to that because it did save in terms of a schedule for the launch if we have been looking for a second partner for this flight. So they gave us a dedicated launch. And the dedicated launch, of course, not only led to an improvement in the schedule of launching of this particular satellite, but equally importantly, instead of putting it at uh, 200 kilometers, you have now put us at 250 kilometers. Instead of making it at 6.8 degrees, you have put it at 4 degrees. And I trust. I have to tell you that your satellite has been acquired. Right. I'll mention that. So this has been done. I'm also happy to inform that our satellite was to be acquired over the ground station at Hassan eight minutes after the separation. And I'm happy to inform all the members here that we have acquired the first signals from the INSAT 2E. INSAT 2E, as you know, is a very important satellite for ISRO. And to have put it now into its uh, celestial journey, we have now major maneuvers to carry out in the coming days. And in fact, uh, the several maneuvers, uh, complicated ones, complex ones, have to be performed, starting with uh, tomorrow's major firing of the Apogee boost motor. And then further, velocity increases towards the realization of the geosynchronous orbit followed by several deployments, and then the payload switch on, uh, three-axis stabilization, payload switch on, and evaluation of the payload. Uh, this is, of course, still a long way to go. In the next uh, 17 or 18 days, we have to carry this out. But uh, that is something that we have to do. You have done your job, and uh, certainly now we have to do this. And of course, then we have the onus of ensuring that uh, we have a 12-year lifetime that the satellite is designed for. And we are also happy that uh, we have, for the first time, some customers of the INSAT who are here, the Intelsat, who will also share the capacity of the INSAT 2E uh, in the context of their expanding operations in the Asia Pacific. And we are happy about that. So at this juncture, all I could say is that certainly you have again justified the confidence that we have in taking the INSAT up into the space. And we do look forward to the 3B launch in the third quarter or the fourth quarter of this year. And I'm sure that our cooperation in the years to come will be further expanded and strengthened because of the excellent relations which we have established and the credentials that we enjoy between each other. Thank you very much. Now I'd like to say that the next launch will take place, that will be flight uh, 118, that will be on the 28th of April, uh, 44P, and it will be TV direct for New Skies in the Netherlands. So it will be the next launch. It's not Ariane, 5, uh, Ariane 5 yet. The next launch of Ariane 5 will be mid-June. It will take with it the Telcom satellite and uh, one other satellite, which will maybe be Asia Star, but it will be uh, said very soon. So much for our calendar. And with those uh, speeches, we wrap up tonight's proceedings. Uh, another successful launch for Ariane. Allumage. Décollage. Tous les paramètres bord sont
unité feu. Allumage. Décollage. Right, our, our launcher is off. Characteristic white plume of the solid propellant boosters. We're trying. 4, 3, 2, unité, feu. Allumage. Décollage. And with those uh, magnificent replays seen from different uh, sites around the Guiana Space Center, the successful launch of Flight 170 with Insat 2E, we take our farewell, say goodbye to you. We hope you've uh, really enjoyed this program and understood a bit more how the Ariane launcher system works, especially to our viewers who've been watching across India at the dead of night. Uh, thank you for your patience. And no doubt you'll be getting extra television pictures and more communication links in a few months' time with the operational start of INSAT-2E. And better uh, weather forecast, of course. It has been also for me a great pleasure being with you tonight. Thank you very much, Juan de Dalmo. A pleasure as well being with you, Martin Ransom, at Mike's side. See you again soon. And uh, remember, at the end of the month, New Skies, KTV Television the next passenger to ride up with Ariane Space. Good night. <laughs>